Well, well, Tommy, welcome to to this show. It's an honor, really, to to see you. I mean, I'm a big fan of Dozer. Actually, I have a special friend of mine uh, brought me this from from Europe. It's a set list from Dozer. Uh, where, where, where? Okay. There. Yeah, this is from your show with Low Rider in London. Hello. So yeah, I'm very, very, oh, yeah. very, very excited to to talk to talk with you. Oh, so, the first you question. Oh, okay. Hello, Gabriel. Yeah, we can hear you now. Kind of broken, but we can hear you. <laughs> oh. No, no. Well, let, let, let's continue. For Tommy, I have the first question for Tommy <laughs> is, how do you discover Stoner Rock in, in Sweden? Well, I guess for me it was hearing Monster Magnet the first time. <laughs> That's how I discovered them in like 90, I think it was uh, Super Judge, that album, but like 90, 93 or 94, around there. Wow. So that's that's how it began for me, and then of course I heard Caius after that, and, and I was hooked. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, can you tell us a, a little bit about how Dozer uh, was born in 1995 and how was the local scene in those days? Well, we were born out of yeah, discovering Monster Magnet and Caius. We 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 really just me and Frederick, our singer, had a band before this, but when we heard Caius, we were like, holy shit, this this the guitar really fat and heavy so we were like we have to play music like this we so we learned to tune down our guitars and yeah that's that's how why yeah. dozer started and they and then in the I mean, scene yeah. in bowling it was pretty much nothing there was one more band it was they started like a year after us demon cleaner it's oh yeah, yeah of course they demon were also cleaner. from yeah. from borlenge our hometown yeah Wow, that's really cool. Well, Sweden changed the game for Stoner Rock. Bands like Astro Queen, Dozer, Lowrider, Blind Dog, and now Truck Fighters create a new heavier sound. I'm curious about how this happened and what do you think about the new generation of Stoner Heads? I think it's really cool compared to how it was. Yeah, of course, there was a lot of bands in the late 90s and early 2000s, but the scene around here wasn't that big there was a lot of bands but when we played shows that not so many people showed up so it's a, getting a lot better now so there's a lot of new yeah fans younger people getting into stoner rock and that's yeah that's really cool so the scene scene has been Definitely. growing for sure yeah yeah that's that's cool gabriel can you hear us now yeah, I can hear a bit better. Let's try now because for uh, two minutes oh, let's do we're it. gone. Let's do Sorry. It. Yeah, w welcome to the show. It's uh, it's an honor. Uh, well, I have the first question is almost the same. Uh, how do you discover Stoner Rock in Italy? Well, Italy doesn't look uh, to have to have great bands, but. Uh, we had some from the really beginning of the history, from 94, uh, 95, That's All Folks uh, and Vortice Cremisi, and other small bands that started really, really soon, right after Caius exploded. And um, so I knew Snow Rock from Caius. My cousin came back from United States with a cassette of Blues for the Red Sun. And I mean, it was mind blowing. It was crazy. I was 12, 13 years old. It was crazy to me to listen to that music. Yeah, I, I, can, I can imagine. Uh, well, uh, can you tell us a little bit how Black? Uh, well, can you tell us a little bit about Black Rainbows and how the project start? Uh, I play space rock with another band since. 98 until 2007 but we didn't really make any uh, any promotion of the band or really 
we work it hard and uh, right after I dropped this band I started Black Rainbows in 2007 and we've got a little help from a small label from France but at that time for us was a very good I mean was very good yeah. moment and um, since that moment how Tommy was saying also 2007, 8, 9 I mean, wasn't a big scene around this kind of music. So wh when you were talking about Stoner or Doom, people didn't know what what it was, or at least they they knew what it was, but they were not. I mean, there was that that was not like before, like like today. Sorry, since like 2014 until today has been really really incredible, uh, raising up of the of the scene. Yeah, also thanks to Heavy Sykes and Records. I mean, it's important to say that. And I, I know, Ivan, if you have some questions for, for Tommy. For oh, yeah. Uh, I, I want to ask you, both of you, I don't know who can go first, but uh, do you mind to be labeled as uh, Stoner Rock? Because, you know, in the early days, in the 90s, a lot of the bands uh, didn't like, you know, the label because uh, they said not a lot of the bands, you know, they were not, none of them were stoners, none of them uh, uh, smoke weed or anything. But you seem like not bothering about it. Should I start? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't. I don't really. I used to be more bothered about it before, when we yeah when we played with Dozer when people call it stoner rock because yeah we don't we don't smoke or do drugs, but nowadays I don't really I don't really care what people call it. As long as they listen to the music, that's the most important thing. That's how I, I see know. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how about you, Gabriel? I believe that every band has its own terminology and jam. So, for example, Black Rainbows, I believe they are more into heavy psych and more, um, yes, yeah, stoner. I, I, I don't mind at all. I mean, Dozer came so long before. For, and uh, they did that. I mean, all the first the earlier bands, they were the best. I mean, Fumanchu, Nebula, Dozer, Lowrider. And actually, if I have to, in my mind, my personal opinion, if I have to define Stoner Rock to me, it's Dozer and Lowrider sound. Really. <laughs> You're, right. You're right. You're <laughs> right. Well, I, yeah, I believe Lowrider O2EO <laughs> is the really the definition of, I mean, to me. I mean, I believe Caius is more desert attitude. And, uh, okay. I mean, the, the Swedish, yes, the Swedish sound is more, uh, is more defined and more heavy. And... Um, and they found th their own way of doing. I mean, Nebula is more bluesy because Eddie Glass plays that that way, and Fu Manchu is more into skate. You know that that kind of imaginary and that kind of um, impression. But I believe that the Swedish sound was very I don't know monolithic in terms of stone rock. Yeah, that's really cool, man. Well. Uh, another question for, for Tommy, uh, this is uh, probably you remember, sometime Sergio from Los Natas told me the story when they traveled to California to record Ciudad de Brahman and basically the first night the guys of Los Natas saw you play a desert party. Do you remember something about this party and about the split with Los Natas from Argentina? I remember that party. <laughs> Actually, we came to strangely. We, we came to <laughs> strangely. I remember it. Actually, I saw them play because we came to. We flew to Los Angeles. Me and a bunch of friends were going there on vacation. That's the story. And then we saw that Los Natas were playing at the small club in I think it was like Costa Mesa or something. So we actually were at that show first before they met them in the desert. I don't know if they know that I was there with my friends. <laughs> But anyway, I saw them play at. I saw them play at. It was it was a New Year's Eve party at Scott Reader's house. Yeah, yeah, he told and me I, that. Yeah, they played. Yeah, they played there, and yeah, and after that, we have actually met them at least a handful of times. 
doing shows in Europe in early 2000s. Nice guys. Wow, that's really cool. Nice yeah, yeah. Sergio is still playing in another band uh, called Soldati. It's really, really cool. Yeah, I heard, really, the, I heard them. A, I heard, I heard yeah. You, you should uh, re-release this split, Gabriel. Maybe someday Los Natas Dozer. <laughs> Where is that split? Yes. <laughs> It's a legend. It's a legend, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, question for Gabriel <laughs> right now. Uh, uh, well, uh, tell us a little bit about your new album, Cosmic Ritual, Super Trip, and what's uh, next for, for Black Rainbow, talking about the band? Uh, this last album, I believe, is the best album better recorded i mean the, the 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 best album better recorded i have regrets in the past black rainbow's albums because has been recorded not in the right way and not with the right gear so i always regret about that and uh, these last two albums especially the last one uh has the the right sound i always for the band even if arrived after so many albums yeah, it's a, it's a really good and, album, I, actually. I, I love the new album. Yeah, and nowadays, I mean, yeah, writing songs coming pretty easy because we, we know exactly what what we want and how how to get it. And uh, I have, I mean, I have the new album pretty ready, but I'm so overwhelmed. I mean, writing the album is, is not the the toughest part i mean the, the 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 rough part is to really clean all the parts and uh go in the rehearsal space with the guys and work on the tracks for a long time and make the pre-production <laughs> and write the lyrics i mean it's a long process so writing the songs yeah. is the best part and now i'm i'm a bit i mean overwhelmed of a lot of things to do so, so i know i don't know if i'm ready to to start working on that yeah d d don't do it they continue uh, uh, playing new songs and well now for tommy i have other question dozer is back in the game thanks to gabriel you release again all the records via heavy sykes and records and a new ep can you can you tell us a little bit amar about uh, can you tell us a little bit more if it's true that you're working in a new album dozer is working in a new album Feel the beans. Well, it's true. <laughs> we decided yeah. last year to. Try. All right. <laughs> we decided last year to give it a try and see how it goes, and then yeah, it was in January this year we started. Yeah, we met up at the rehearsal room and yeah, tried to get the feel how it feels to play with the guys again, and yeah, so far it feels good. We have a whole bunch of ideas. We don't have any ready songs, but I think we have like, I don't know, five, six, seven song ideas. Frederick, Frederick has really been on fire for this one. I think he has sent me <laughs> song ideas for like 15 songs now or something. <laughs> but yeah, oh, that's we will, a really good thing. Like, like, like always, we will try to. Yeah, one of us brings the riff and we work it into a song together in the rehearsal room. That's so that's the way it works for us. But yeah, hopefully, hope hopefully next year a full album. Looking forward for it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh yeah, that's a really good. I'm very excited. <laughs> really, really. We get all 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 uh, kicked up. Yeah. All hyped. <laughs> <laughs> well, question now for for Gabriel. Uh, talking about Heavy Psych Sun Records, uh, how the label start and how did it become one of the best stoner labels in the planet? Well, <laughs> can you hear us? Mm. Oh no. He was he was so excited by the question he, he <laughs> passed. He passed. <laughs> well now, well actually I have I have a lot of questions for you guys. But for for Tommy, uh, you released a new album with Greenleaf, as Echoes from Amas. Yeah, kick-ass uh, album, I must say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, actually, it's the number one in the Doom chart, so congratulations right for, for that. Right so can you tell us Thanks. a little bit about the recording process and the concept behind Game. the album, this new album of Greenleaf? Well, the recording process... The recording process okay, we started writing pretty much right away after right away Here the Rivers was released. Because we never, never stopped writing music, so... I think we had like four or five songs ready before the pandemic hit us and after that, yeah, we wrote the rest of the album. And um, yeah, during the pandemic it was a little bit harder because we have a bass player that lives in Germany. <laughs> so we couldn't get together to rehearse as much, but in then we got like, just before the recording we got four days of rehearsals and that was it before the recording oh cool cool we, we can hear you gabriel yeah we can hear you gabriel okay. you're talking about the new album of green leaf the record process yeah yeah then we it's much better now yeah cool right yeah continue tell me but please. yeah then we yeah, then we recorded the album in Stockholm with Carl Daniel Liden, the guy who has recorded, past, I don't know, four or five albums with us now. We recorded everything live except for the vocals, and it all turned out pretty good, if you ask me. I'm I'm still satisfied. And you can really you can ask album, me in a year, <laughs> you can ask me in a year again how satisfied I am in the end. <laughs> Still, it feels fresh for okay. me, so it's it's all good. It's all good. That's really cool. Do, do you think someday Dulcer or Greenleaf will play in Mexico and South America? We can pay you money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I really hope so. We've been asked to go come there with Greenleaf at least, but so far we haven't worked anything. I hope that we will come to South America, for sure. Yeah, that's really with cool. Both, well, with both bands. Hacer aquí en este foro, ¿no? Yeah, I, I hope I hope maybe maybe you can come here to channel six six six. Maybe maybe someday. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, if we're if we're in Mexico, then why not? Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now uh, to, uh, Gabriel, Gabriel uh, talking about heavy psych sound. Uh, can you tell us how the label started and how it became one of the best stoner? Uh, labels in the in this planet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank thank you for that. And um, I mean, back in 2007, we start um, yeah with Black Rainbow's albums and um, some other small releases and some friends. I mean, we had the luck to be on tour and play shows with the Burn and other bands, and we've been able to these the some of their I mean EPs and uh, I mean not albums for the biggest bands but I mean was was a good start to get this this name some board and um, so slowly slowly is I mean it's not only the such as is not only of the label but it's also about the scene I mean we've been lucky because the scene was growing a lot during the time we were working hard to, to bring to bring the bands and also the vinyl. Uh, I mean, vinyls came back uh, pretty popular. I mean, yeah. ten years ago. So this helped a lot too. I mean, ten years ago, I mean, you didn't have to wait so much time to get a vinyl pressed as today. So everybody now is printing their own vinyls but i mean 10 years ago was pretty pretty low moment for for that so yeah, i mean that's... has been really the uh, occasion and we've been with you i mean before us there's been really better labels probably like tp records or small stone they i mean small Only okay, uh, maybe a little uh, we less and really depends i mean if if tomorrow we're going to not working hard as today probably i mean everything is going to fade out pretty soon 
So in this moment, yeah. we're working a lot. Let, let's say this. Yeah. So yeah, I can and, imagine. Uh, in the last, in the I last can years, we, we really had the chance to work with the, with the biggest names around. I mean, with very good, very good names. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can imagine you received tons of demos and requests uh, for bands around the world. How do you choose the bands to work with the label? Uh, I mean, from one side, we go to our of Tommy, for example, or other good bands. We try to to bring, I mean, our heroes and, and good names. From the other hand, uh, we listen to all, all the music coming in. And for example, today I received uh, an album, incredible album. And, and, uh, I believe what, what I'm good, oh. maybe it's not so good with Gabriel. Uh, we, we can hear you, Gabriel. Can, can, can you repeat the last part, please? Stuff, but I'm, I think... <laughs> You're breaking in, man. You're breaking in. Oh, damn it. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Ahora que, ahora que nos diga qué, qué banda estaba escuchando. <laughs> Can you repeat the, want... the name of the band? No. No. You're, you're broken, yeah, man. I want to know what band you're breaking, was talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the process, oh, so well. We, we maybe we can chat with them. Yeah, oh. Okay, no, Sorry. no, no. no. <laughs> Anyway, you, that's you, it. you you I broke. Mean, that's... Okay, we couldn't hear you since. What band were you listening to today? And after that, you disappeared. Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't remember the name, but the, the, the album was very good. I listened since the beginning to the end, and was was pretty amazing. And I was saying that, of course, we listened to all the bands, but um, and and not all the bands. Uh, I need to like them. I just need to think. I mean, I, I, they need to be a good band, and they. I mean, they 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 don't need to be like the my favorite bands. I just need to think that this band made a good job for what they did. Yeah, definitely. Uh, do, do you think someday Heavy Psych Sun will work with Mexican or South American bands? I hope so. There's no. Uh, there is no I mean, limit. We've been in touch with um, Argentinian bands lately. It didn't work out. And uh, another Mexican band, I don't remember the name, but it didn't work out. But uh, we don't have any country limit for that. Yeah. Well, talking about Mexico, Heavy Sykes and Records will arrive to this country soon. Can you tell us a little bit more? Please. Hmm. What? What? Sorry. Uh, talking about Mexico, Heavy Psych Sound uh, will arrive to this country soon. So, can you tell us a little bit more? Yes. I mean, uh, we're going to be distributed finally in Mexico by LSDR uh, Records. <laughs> and as we're doing yes, for right. Chile with, with uh, Red House uh, Roberto Fuentes. Is bringing yeah, uh, yeah, right. the records. I mean, bringing yeah, the, the label really cool, over really Chile. Good news. Yes, and finally, maybe we're going to break in um, Mexico in the right way. I know that you I mean Mexico from <laughs> Europe or United States can have some tough uh, shipping situations issues. But I yeah. believe in this way we can supply with the right shipping costs <laughs> and safe delivery um, to Mexico. So we're pretty excited. know that Mexico has a lot of good fans and followers of the music in general, the rock music, and heavy psych rock, stock rock, psychedelic rock music. So yeah. we're excited to bring some music you're in. excited too it's it's an honor to bring heavy psych sound records to mexico yeah, for the first time so yeah that's really cool 
Yeah, do, do you have more questions, uh, Ivan? For pues no sé cuánto tiempo tengamos, pero yeah, one, yeah, one more question. We can do one more. I, maybe. I would like to ask you, uh, both of you, uh, how do you how do you have dealt with all the pandemic stuff? You know, uh, most of the bands, most of the labels, most of the shows have been you know, like frozen in time. So how how do you deal with that? How do you keep uh, you know uh, in the eye of the public if you're not playing? It's a good question. <laughs> we just released an album and we can't really go out and play, so I guess we just have to keep doing interviews like this, first of all, and then hopefully when Hans can fly over to Sweden, we could maybe do like a, a live sh stream show or something, and that's the only way we can do it until we love to play shows again. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Gabriel? Well, from our side in the last years, I mean, we really have a lot of albums and we play shows and for what concerned the band, the Black Rainbows, I mean, <coughs> make, I mean, we've got an entire, uh, a full tour uh, canceled last year with a lot of good shows and festivals. And, uh, but at the end of the story, I mean, we've got to stop. We've got an album released last year and, um, We, we never stopped, actually, since the, we started. So for the band, it was okay. I know for a lot of other bands, it was not okay. I mean, <clears throat> I had to cancel all the HPS Fest in Los Angeles, San Francisco, in New York, and a lot of, a lot of other good, um, good shows. And I know a lot of bands suffered for that. But for us, it was not so, so bad, because, as I said, we, we worked it a lot in the last years. So... A little stop was okay. okay. Cool, cool. Well, uh, I know it's late in Europe, guys, so I have one more request for you. So can you recommend some bands to the fans, your favorite bands, maybe? What you're hearing nowadays. Yeah. Well, let's see. Something I've been listening to lately <laughs> is a band from Australia called Planet of the Eights. It's a really cool uh, band, yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. it's a little it has a little Stone Age and Alice in Shades, but I really I don't I don't know I stuck to that record. I heard it. We did a show with them in Australia, and then I listened to the album at home, and I keep going back to it. <laughs> so it's a good band. You're right, right. Gabriel. And any other bands? Guys? Uh, I can suggest um, a band I listen it really um, not on purpose and it's a classic really classic like like a bit occult stoner heavy uh sleep wolf and they're from yeah. speed and uh they're pretty good a lot of good riffs that, that's cool that's not when uh when the references when the references yeah. no? Well, well, guys, I know you have any other question, oh. Ivan, no? Guys, I know it's late, so thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for this interview. This is your first interview in Mexico, so we are very uh, excited. Thank but you so much. But not the last. But not the last. You need to come here to play. Yeah. You have a lot of fans here. Greenleaf, Dozer, Black Rainbows. So thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks a lot for having us and me and uh, hope to have more interviews like this in the future for Mexico. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, thank you so much, guys. See you later. See you, see you. See you. Bye-bye. See you soon. Ciao. Bye.